across the country, so we use that for the test. Uh, video of the test can be seen with uh, You'll see right away, this is not typical of what we see with the MGS test. I think you took vetting at the facility beforehand. We actually thought this test would work, right? Because we're talking about a vehicle weighs 3,800 pounds, and that's well within the range of what we tested for MASH, um, MASH vehicles with the MGS. Uh, what you see is it clearly didn't contain. We underwrote the barrier um, relatively quickly in the event, and uh, you know this would be considered if it was a mash test, a, a, a failure of the system. Uh, looking at it in a little more detail, uh, another view here. You can see that we do get some initial um, capture of the front fender and bumper, and it starts to redirect, but eventually the uh, rail pushes up on top of that fender, gets engaged with the A-pillar, and then that's not enough to hold on to it, and the rail continues over the top, and uh, the vehicle penetrates through. And we'll talk more, I've got um, some other information here on why we think that is, but just get an idea of, of what we saw on the test. Uh, vehicle damage, there's some pretty interesting takeaways from vehicle damage in this test. Uh, three main things to kind of bring up for you. Uh, one, if you note the front structure of that vehicle, we'll talk about that more in a minute, you can see that the front bumper structure and the structure above the fender isn't what we typically have seen in small car vehicles. Uh, we think that played a role, and you'll see some more of that here in a second. Um, but that's a, that was kind of a significant thing to take away from the, from the vehicle damage. Another thing to note, uh, the undercarriage of that vehicle is not what you're used to seeing in 1100C vehicles. That's that skateboard platform. Uh, we overrode at least four or five posts, strong posts in this test. We've seen in our community in the past that we overrode flange posts. There's a potential to penetrate the floorboard. You can see in the middle picture there, there's some pretty significant gouges on that floorboard. They did not penetrate the floorboard of that vehicle. That battery compartment is really stiff. Um, Floorboard deformations and penetration for electric vehicles may be a thing of the past. Their floors are very strong compared to what we're used to. Uh, and another thing, and this probably isn't electric vehicle specific, but we thought it was interesting. Uh, both the electric vehicles I'm showing you today we tested have glass rooms. Um, that's not something that we've run into in the past. Uh, if that trend continues, that may pose challenges not so much guardrail related, but more related with signs and lumen air poles. Um, we have roof crush criteria. That'll be an interesting problem if all the, blue, all the roofs become laminated glass as vehicles move forward. Maybe they won't, but uh, we thought it was kind of an interesting <coughs> thing to look at the damage. So we wanted to talk a little bit. The first thing we did, we saw the failure. We didn't expect the failure. Um, we started looking at previous MGS testing as kind of comparison points. Uh, we had three relatively good comparison points uh, that we had in-house to look at, and those were um, the original testing of the MTS to MASH, which is 2214 MG3, that was almost the same system, 32 inches tall, with the, in this case a 12 inch block out, but it used a, the, the Kia Rio via, via, vehicle. Um, so that's a good analog. And then we also had two very similar tests. We did some tests at maximum rail heights for the MGS after it was originally developed. And those were running at 34 and 36 inch mounting heights. Um, those both redirected the vehicle, but we thought they'd provide them interesting comparison points for what we saw in the EV testing. A couple things to note right out the gate there. Um, inertial mass, we mentioned it, it's a big deal. It, it was likely a contributing factor to what we saw in that test. If the mass goes up as much as it did there, you see the impact severity goes up well over 50% for that impact. You know, that, that's not helping us contain the vehicle. We don't think it's the only factor, but it was certainly there. Another thing that comes into play, I mentioned CG height earlier. The CG heights on these Teslas are four to five inches lower than what we typically see in a Kia. Um, again, is that the only factor? No, but it's certainly, if you're loading that rail significantly lower than you are with a higher CG height, the, the load path is different. It, it makes underride a little more likely, right? So to look at these tests side by side now, um, you can see the, a little bit of difference in behavior. Um, again, obviously, the three tests with the Kia vehicles, they were all successful redirections, even with a rail that was four inches higher than what we tested with here. Um, so that's interesting in terms of, of why we didn't get an underride in previous testing. If we look at uh, some sequential views, for me, it's always easier to slow these things down. I like to make still pictures because I guess my brain doesn't work fast enough to get through them when they're playing side by side. Um, so you start looking at them and, you know, right away, 50 milliseconds in, you can see that, that there's a lot more deflection in the test with the Kia than we saw on the test with the, with, or not, excuse me, not with the Kia, the EV test than we saw on the Kias. That kind of makes sense, right? At the same time frame, we have more load, um, we're going to get more deflection. We also see, as we continue through, um, a little bit more rotation of the rail, twisting of the rail. 
Um, in all the tests, the rail tends to rise up on the vehicle to some degree, but we saw a little more twisting of it in the EV test. Um, again, as it continues through, the biggest difference is on the tests with the Kia vehicles, the rail largely stays vertical and maintains itself on the side of the vehicle on the sheet metal. Um, in the, and we also get some of the roll of the vehicle away from the barrier. Um, with the EVs, we don't really see that. The EV tests, we don't really see that. And what we get is um, the rail protruding here, proceeding up the fender until it gets on the A pillar and then we underride the rail, you know, and, and get a very different performance there over time. So with that in mind then, we started looking at, well, what are some of the other things causing the differences besides the mass and the CG height? Uh, we started looking at the geometries. Um, obviously the geometries of these vehicles appear to be a little different. And again, this is just one EV. This may not be indicative of all of them, but it is the one that we evaluated with. First thing we did is we started looking at side-by-side -side views and, and measuring some relevant points. So we took measurements at the center of the headlight, the center of the wheel, and the base of the A pillar. It measured essentially the vertical profile of the front of the vehicle at those points. And kind of across the board there, the, the Tesla vehicle was essentially an inch and a quarter to two and a half inches lower than what we saw um, for our existing 1100C vehicle. You know, is that, again, not the only factor that plays it, but the lower geometry certainly doesn't help in containment, so, so it, it's a factor. And you can see that when you park those vehicles side by side, then you can see it's got a lower nose, a lower front profile. Uh, a little more aerodynamic than what we're used to in our current test vehicle. Another thing that comes into play is that vehicle structure. Again, you get an idea there. The front end of the Kia is largely an open structure, um, both in the trunk area and on the fender well and on the sides of the bumper. Um, that's different than what we see when we have engine and drivetrain components in there. Structurally, the vehicles have to be built different to contain those structures, and there's more structure out to the sides of the vehicle, I think, than what we're seeing. Uh, I think there's also been some differences in crash testing that have led to that. Um, we're talking with some of the auto manufacturers about that right now, uh, and we're still looking into that. Um, maybe a better way to look at that is if we look at post-test damage from those tests that I just showed. You can see the damage I already showed on the, on the Tesla up at the left there. When you're looking at similar damage in three different guardrail tests with that vehicle, you can see obviously you have a more vertical side structure. Um, that engaged the rail in all three of those tests. You can see where the WB actually engaged the fender all the way across in those tests. The other thing you can see is uh, the amount of structure in front of the front wheel there is really different. You can actually see frame elements in front of the front wheel on the Kias that, that really doesn't exist in the Tesla. So um, clearly the structure we think is playing, playing a part in what we saw in the test as well. So maybe to wrap up the first test there, um, obviously we had a, an underride and penetration in the Tesla Model 3 test at the MGS. Um, and that was with a, this barrier system that essentially already redirected 1100C vehicles at, at higher heights. So um, an interesting result to say the least. I've mentioned all these before, but just to reiterate the potential factors we think that are playing in there. Obviously the increased inertial mass of 1400 pounds plays in. That's not gonna help with containment. Um, but we have contained vehicles that large before. The lower CG changes the loading of the rail to some degree. We see the lower front end geometry and structural differences is playing a bigger part maybe than we had originally anticipated. Um, and that's been probably the most interesting aspect of what we're seeing with the EV test that we, we probably weren't as concerned about early on. 